Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're going to look at a couple of incredibly exciting new cards from the upcoming Crimson Invasion expansion. And when I say incredibly exciting... This is not some mere overstatement, ladies and gentlemen. This is potentially the most broken combination we've had released in quite some time. So settle down, quite frankly, and listen up, because things are about to get a little bit broken. Starting off, we've got a new Shinx. Now, we talked about Luxray the other day. We're going to go back to Luxray in a minute, but Shinx is, of course, the pre-evolution of Luxray. Generally speaking, we don't tend to talk about basics that evolve into Stage 2s. Outside of the odd example like Alolan Vulpix, they're generally not particularly good. Now, Shinx might have 50 HP, which is low, and a weakness to fighting, which is horrible with the whole Buzzwall thing at the moment, as well as having a retreat cost, which his big brother Luxray doesn't. Although, I will grant that the resistance to metal is pretty good. No, ladies and gentlemen, the thing that really rocks about Shinx is the fact that it has an ability saying this Pokemon can evolve on the first turn of the game or on the turn it's played. Exactly the same as the Caterpie from Generations had or any of the old Pokemon like Mega Rayquaza that had the Delta Evolution Ancient Trait, which means you can evolve into your Luxio on the very first turn of the game or you can just go Shinx and immediately evolve up into Luxio. Well, hang on a second. Luxio's just the middle evolution. It's not like you're going straight into a Luxray and Luxio doesn't have this same ability. Heck, it doesn't even have an ability. So why are we excited about this? Well, let me explain. If we have a look at Luxio, we go up to 80 HP. Still an issue with Buzzwall, because even though they're only hitting 60 with weakness, either a Fighting Fury Bow or a Strong Energy will get the KO. You aren't lasting very long. Again, you don't have free retreat, and you've got a resistance to metal. It's not looking particularly spectacular until we look at the attack, which I should mention these cards have been translated by the lovely David Hockman. Check him out at Rappelman TCG on Facebook. And it reads, you do 30 damage for a single colorless energy. Your opponent cannot play any item cards from their hand next turn. It's literally quaking punch for a single colorless energy. And let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most annoying things about Seismitoad was that you had to get a double colorless energy. You're limited to playing four of them in your deck. Not the case here. You can play as many basic energy as you like. And the fact that it's a colorless means you can put it into any deck whatsoever. You can tech it into anything whatsoever. It is utterly, ludicrously, brokenly ridiculous. Now, the fact that it's a stage one would usually have us going, well, okay, but you know, it's a stage one, so you've got to wait for a turn to evolve it, and Shinx has only got 50 HP, so maybe it's not actually that good. But no! Because Shinx has that ability. So if you go second, you can just bench a Shinx, evolve into a Luxio, and immediately item lock your opponent for the game. No Ultra Balls to search out Pokemon. No tools like, for instance, Choice Band or Floatstone to get out of the active. All of these items that we use on a regular basis, all of a sudden they're not there. Even things like Rescue Stretcher to try and get some of your Pokemon back from the discard. They are off the table. I shouldn't need, for older players at least, I shouldn't need to explain how good Item Lock is. We've seen it with Seismitoad, we've seen it with Trevenant, we've seen it with Vileplume. But of course, this is more like Seismitoad than it is Vileplume. This is single-sided Item Lock, which is way better, because while your opponent doesn't get to use their items, you still do. And I cannot explain quite how amazing that is. Although, like I say, if you've been playing, or if you were playing when Seismitoad was a thing, you will know. Then you add in the fact that you've got the ability. Then you add in the fact that you're only giving up one prize, unlike Seismitoad. And the fact that it's for a basic energy, meaning that you can put it into any deck whatsoever. And you've got a crazy broken Pokemon. Now, having said that, it's got 80 HP and it's weak to Boswell, it's not going to be hanging around for very long. It's going to get KO'd very easily. If only we had a way to more than double its HP. Oh, wait, we totally do. We've got that Luxray I mentioned earlier. 
Luxray has 150 HP, which I know technically isn't double, but it's also got the ability, which means that it takes 30 less damage from attacks as long as it's in the active. Now, as a ruling query, and I know a bunch of people did talk about this in the comments of my Luxray video, if we take a look at Don Fan, because what other card am I going to use in this situation? The precedent really has been set here. It's going to be after weakness and resistance. So a Boswell with no extra damage dealing effects like strong energy would do 60 with weakness, then get reduced to 30, it would not go from 30 down to zero before applying weakness. It's almost always, by which I mean it's always after weakness and resistance. So that gives you an effective HP of 180, but that's only if they're getting a one-hit KO. It will keep going down, ladies and gentlemen. So the first turn they've got to hit you for 180, but then you take 30 off, and then the next turn you'll take 30 off, and so on and so forth. Luxray is incredibly tanky. But hang on a second, I'm here talking about Luxio as this great Pokemon with this amazing attack. Now I'm talking about Luxray having a lot more HP. This is where Shining Celebi comes in. And I've been telling you all for a while now that Shining Celebi at some point will lead to a broken combo. Well, now we have it. Shining Celebi's ability allows you to use the pre-evolution attacks for all of your Pokemon. That means that Luxray gets the attacks of Shinx and Luxio. Well, that now gets a bit silly, because now Luxray, for a single colourless energy, does 30 damage plus blocks item cards. It has Quaking Punch, but it's a single prize Pokemon with 150 HP, a resistance to metal and an ability to reduce his damage done by 30 as long as it's in the active. Now, that thing on the ability of Luxray is actually really important because there will be several occasions where a Boswell tries to deal 30 bench damage to a Luxray. It will work. Now, maybe it gets changed when it comes over here, but the translation we have at the moment is it only blocks if it's in the active. This is a ridiculous combination, and any of you listening, loyal listeners out there, run to your computer and order some Shining Celebes, if you haven't done so already, because the price of that card is going to absolutely skyrocket. I was sitting around doing some prep work for the stream today, twitch.tv slash Pokemon TCG underscore EU, starts tomorrow, and I saw the scan for this card, and then I went to eBay and bought two Shining Celebi, because it's that Gosh darned good. Now, we have obviously got the issue of the weakness to Boswell, which is a bit of a problem. But the great thing here is, any deck you're worried about, just play a counter. If you're worried about Boswell, fine. Play Espeon. Play Garboda. You can play whatever energy you like here, so just play something else. Worried about Gardevoir? Go and play Cabalion. And that leads me on to my next point here. Counter Energy. Now, Counter Energy is just really good with Cabalion against something like Gardevoir. But also, Luxray's got a good attack. 150 damage to anywhere on the field for a Lightning, Lightning, and another Energy, and you discard all the Lightning. So let's say you're playing it with something like Garboda, and you've got a Lightning Energy on Luxray, attach Counter Energy and then discard it to do 150 anywhere on the field. This is frankly ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. This is a borderline broken combination. This will instantly become a meta deck. Now there is a question of what Luxray is going to be played with. Certainly Luxio and Shining Celebi are an absolute given. And it's not even like being a stage 2 is a big issue. You don't need rare candy here, because you can evolve Shinx on turn 1, and then turn 2 you just manually evolve into Luxray, Rare Candy really isn't an issue here. What the best build of this is going to be is potentially at issue. But how good it's going to be, I really don't believe is at issue at all. It is a ridiculous combination. The biggest weakness you've got is Boswell, but you can easily counter that by just playing some psychic stuff. Shining Celebi, Luxray and Luxio really are the core of this. But if you got annoyed by Seismitoad and you didn't like Item Lock, bad news, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming back, and it could even be better. What's that you're saying? We don't have Hypnotoxic Laser nowadays. Yeah, but we have Nihiligo.
I am not even breaking a sweat making this a five wassy card. I know I've given out a few five wassies lately. I'm sorry. This card is utterly ridiculous. Now, I did say that I was a big fan of this card. You might have heard somebody shout broken earlier in the video. And when I went and bought two Shining Celebi, Nick Pierce went and bought ten. So let's get a very quick second opinion from the man himself. Hey, Nick. Hey Ross, thanks for inviting me along to say a quick word. Yes, indeed, I did go and buy 10 Shining Celebes after our little discussion. It's, I mean, to me, it just seems so obvious to do because that combination of reducing the damage taken whilst ice knocking your opponent, it's, it, I mean, it's not the first time we've had a broken Lux Ray. It's, um, now I'm just thinking all I need to do is make another Garchomp and we have Lux Chomp again um, to uh, sort of recreate that. But it's having played um toad a lot when that was around and gotten a lot of uh, really good results with size i'm very excited to see a really powerful item locking card in the game again even if it might make some games a bit less fun for some people but as always ladies and gentlemen if you disagree with us well that's what the comment section is there for go nuts be nice make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel follow me on twitter at the wassy and twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel and get some of the now weekly bonus podcasts then well you can do that as well just go and check it out at patreon.com slash ptcg radio but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio and he was nick